Hello and welcome podcast listeners. My name is Ellen Stewart and I am the Pushy Broad from the Bronx. She's the Pushy Broad from the Bronx, New York. Follow her voice, a straight dog is nice. She's the Pushy Broad from the Bronx, oh yeah. Don't be surprised if you want to listen twice. Make decisions, find the right choice. Know yourself better, find your own voice. It's okay if you need help today, cause everybody needs a little push. From the pushy broad from the Bronx, New York. Welcome to my weekly podcast, airing every Monday. I am here to help women rediscover their identity through self-awareness and empowerment. And I'm going to do it the pushy broad way. Straight up, no BS, easy, quick, with answers, suggestions, and directions that will give you a coaching experience that will be part cheerleader and part drill sergeant. Because everybody needs a little push from time to time. And here comes yours. Everybody, 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 everybody needs a little push. Everybody needs a little push. Everybody, 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 everybody needs a little push. Everybody, 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 everybody needs a little push. Topic of this podcast Episode 40 is, Who Are You? Do you know who you are? How do you see yourself? What words do you use to describe yourself? Do you first think, I'm a good mother, a good wife, or I'm a good person, I have a good heart? Are you really self-aware? Are you looking at yourself honestly? Who are you now? Is that different from the person you were before? Do you feel like you're still hiding and really want to come out as the person you really want to be? Do you see yourself clearly or do you see yourself through the eyes of others? That's what we're going to talk about today. How do we get to our self-empowerment and self-awareness? How do we rediscover our identity and first really begin to be honest and know ourselves. Here's the first email from one of my listeners. Dear Pushy Broad from the Bronx, I just sent my youngest child off to college. When I dropped him off, came back home, I realized that I wasn't much of a real person other than being a mother to my children. I had nothing else to do. Here I am, an empty nester, and I have no idea where to start. My kids were everything to me for the last 20 years, and I'm proud of that. The only issue now is that I'm not sure that I've committed to anything else, and certainly not myself, in all that time. I have no idea who I am. Needing some advice. Cheryl from Bozeman, Montana. Thank you, Cheryl, for one of the most honest, open emails I have ever received. I think that, believe it or not, you're on the road to finding yourself. And it starts with being aware. You are aware of the fact that you are an empty nester. And certainly those things can be difficult. You have said that you have spent a lot of time with your life revolved around your children. Okay, so... Now it's time to move forward and let go of being the mother first and let's see what the woman is like. Start making a list of your favorite pastimes, your hobbies, what your ideal day would look like, what would be perfect for you with no restrictions, nobody on your back, no child asking you for a favor, just taking the time to sit and relax and see what's comfortable for you. You no longer can be defined just by motherhood. We are, as women, more than that. We are more than wives. We're more than wives and mothers. We are women first. Remember what it was like before the children. Try to find some of your passions. What do you like to do? 
Do you like working with your hands? Do you like working with other people, with animals, with numbers, with words, etc.? What do you like? And you have to start by making a list. What would you do with or without pay? What interests do you have? What music do you like? Begin to know who Cheryl is. What would be your ideal day? Think about it. A walk on the beach, a hike in the mountains, going to a spa. This is where you begin to rediscover yourself. Do you like movies? Do you like TV? You can understand and really appreciate your likes and dislikes. Take your lovely children who you have raised and set out into the world and just put them in a box. It's called compartmentalization. Just put them on the side, know that they're being well taken care of, and now focus all of your attention on Cheryl. You can discover things just by browsing. See what catches your eye. See what interests you. That's where you start. With a simple list of likes and dislikes. With a simple list of what your ideal day would look like. What do you want only for yourself? Sometimes it takes time to do, but you can do it. I want you to begin to rediscover your identity. And that is the first way to start. Here's another email from one of my listeners. Dear Pushy Broad from the Bronx, I'm so afraid to share who I am and what I'm interested in with anybody. I'm afraid that people won't like me once they see the real me. How can I remain honest with myself and still feel loved by others? Lorraine from Scottsdale, Arizona. Lorraine, Lorraine, Lorraine. If you are afraid to share who you really are, then whoever loves you doesn't really love you for who you are. They love you for who they think you are. Living a lie is not living at all. Just imagine for a moment what a freeing experience it would be to be true to yourself, honest with yourself, and honest with the world. And the people that love you will love you no matter what you are and who you want to be. And I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't love you more. And if they don't love you for sharing your complete and total honesty, then you'll find other people who care. It's very important to share who you are, especially if you really have a handle on it. Be brave. Be bold. Be empowered. Use that self-awareness and shout it from the rooftops. Lorraine, tell everybody who you are. Take a look at my Letting Go tribe and join the tribe. It's free. Go to my Facebook page, Pushy Broad from the Bronx. Join the Letting Go tribe and you can share in that group who you are. It's a safe place to try out your new self-awareness. Stand up, Lorraine. Tell the world who you are. What are you holding on to? What's weighing you down and causing you stress? How would it feel to let it go? Imagine how much happier your life would be. Letting go is the one simple tool and skill that can be taught. You want to know how? Go to my Facebook page, Pushy Broad from the Bronx, and ask to join the closed group, Letting Go Tribe. Our members are also eager to let go of the pain, hurt, stress, and live happier, healthy, more empowered lives. Join us. You are not alone. We are here together. Also be on the lookout for my course letting go in four steps coming soon with group coaching from me, Ellen Stewart. Letting go can be taught. And the Pushy Broad from the Bronx wants to show you how easy it is. Start by joining my group, Letting Go Tribe. Do you want quick answers to things with no BS? Here's my segment, No or Yes. When you need a quick answer, no BS. Ask the Pushy Broad and she'll say.
Dear Pushy Broad from the Bronx, I spend my life focusing on my husband and my children. If I'm happy this way, is it wrong to keep the focus on them? Yes, it's wrong. It's wrong if you're losing your identity in the process. To worry about the husband and the kids all the time is taking away from your wants, needs, and desires. If you are in a situation where all of your emotions and feelings are derived strictly from other people, then yes, it is wrong. If you have managed to have your own life and your own interests and your own feelings, and if the kids get into a fight, you are not riding their roller coaster of emotions, then you can focus on the kids and on the husband. But if someone says to me, I am completely focused on somebody else other than myself, no matter who that is, yes, it is codependent and not a healthy thing to do. You cannot make sacrifices in your life to lose your identity. You can make compromises, not sacrifices. That's a very important thing. So I'm not so sure you're as happy as you could be. Try to keep some of the focus of attention on yourself. It does not mean that you care less about them. It only means that you have emotions and feelings too. And you have a life. Let's start living it for yourself. This third segment I call 10 Minutes of Tears. It's where we pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and start all over again. We realize that there are difficult push moments in our lives, the times when we are grieving or in pain and maybe feel the need to cry about it. Or maybe we feel so angry about something that we want to scream and cry about it. First, we have to give ourselves 10 minutes of tears by giving ourselves permission to feel sad or angry and do the crying we need to do. But... We can't live with that pain or anger or sadness forever. So this is where we take the time to acknowledge it all and hopefully get some real relief. When you're feeling sad and kind of blue, rather lost and not really in it. Don't stay angry, lost or confused. Ten minutes of tears is certainly for you. Please cry, but only for ten minutes. Dear Pushy Broad from the Bronx, I've been working on a job for the past 15 years. I feel that I've earned the respect of my colleagues. However, I am being pushed out by a newer, much younger male boss. I feel like I'm beginning to lose the respect of my colleagues and I'm losing my self-esteem. How can I feel more assured by my job and get control of my emotions? Thanks. Jillian from Rochester, New York. Thanks for sharing, Jillian. I get so many letters from women that have been working for such a long time and feel that they have been passed over by younger people coming in and usurping their power and their positions and their authority. I am very sorry about that. I know it is emotionally distressing. So take the time to cry about it, but only take 10 minutes because there are many things that you can do. First of all, Think about how you want to reinvent yourself. Maybe now it's time for you to find something else to do. You have great experience, great connections, and working at one place for 15 years, I'm sure you've networked with a lot of different people. Maybe there are other companies out there that will take your experience and your credentials. So see if you can make a move. That's one choice. The second choice is maybe you want to go out on your own completely, be an entrepreneur with everything that you've learned. So network, make the contacts, formulate a plan. The next thing you can do is actually talk to an attorney. If you are in your senior years and you feel that maybe ageism is at play here, then talk to attorney and see what your rights are. The next thing that you can do is have a conversation with your much younger boss and say, I would like my role more clearly defined. Would you please give me a new job description? Because now I'm a little confused as to what you want me to do. Part of you knows that in the corporate world, you have to play the game. You are not alone here. Realize also that it is just a job. It is not who you are and what kind of person you are. 
It's only a salaried job. That's all. And I know if you care a great deal about it, I understand your feelings, but you're not going to let the job decide for you how you feel about yourself and how you feel about the job that you've done for the past 15 years. I'm not sure why you're beginning to lose the respect of your colleagues, but if you just continue to do the job that you've always done, I think the respect of your colleagues will still be there. Stand up for who you are. Take some chances. Or find a beautiful, wonderful new way to get out to a whole new adventure. Here's my last segment. I'm talking here. I'm talking here. I'm talking here. Listen. Learn. Pay attention. I'm talking here. The best way to discover who you are is to begin the process of learning about yourself. See this as an adventure. Finding the real you can be a very enlightening experience. Learning who you are takes time. But first, you have to wake up your brain. You start by journaling. Create your own life timeline. Write down all of your goals, the goals that you have achieved in the past, and the goals that you want to achieve in the future. Write down some of the past events in your life that have already happened and that have shaped or affected you. When life sometimes brings problems or misfortunes, it shapes our belief system and makes us think differently. But it also makes us who we are. Remember your core values. What's really important to you? What are the things that are unshakable about who you are? This is not an exercise in putting yourself down. It's about clarifying and identifying your core values values. Spend a little time on your timeline. Do it from an objective point of view. If you're going to spend time analyzing negative past experiences, then please focus on what you've learned from them. Everybody has negativity in their life, and if you exaggerate them or ignore them, either of those won't help you. Instead, recognize that these experiences have shaped you. Now I want you to distinguish your thoughts from the thoughts of other people. It's very important that you understand that what other people think of you is none of your business. So I want you to separate the ideas in your head. So if you're thinking, well, I think I'm a little too fat because I know my husband thinks so, I want you to take your husband's thoughts and put them in a box and then look at yourself in the mirror and see how you really feel about yourself. Every single time, your thoughts are your own, and your gut will dictate what those thoughts really are. I want you to try to completely abandon the negative. I know it sounds difficult, but I want you to see the positive in everything that has happened to you. The law of attraction tells us that positive energy attracts positive energy, which means positive thoughts attract positive energy. So try to do something every day that maybe you were afraid to do before. Just one little fearless step. Maybe it's a brand new class or you want to sample something on the menu that you've never tried before. One simple fearless step. Then you have to talk to yourself. You have to question yourself. Ask yourself difficult and far-reaching questions and write down your answers. Something like, if I woke up tomorrow morning and I was doing exactly what I wanted to do and I had that perfect day, what would it be? Or if I could go on the adventure of a lifetime, where would that be? If you have a career problem and you're trying to sort out that path, then that's part of knowing who you are. If you've been floundering all over the place looking for the right fit, chances are it's because you're not happy inside. So, spend some time browsing. Think about what you like and what you don't like. Those things come naturally, 
You won't have to try hard. Your gut will lead you down the right path. Maybe you need some alone time. Immerse yourself in solitude. Maybe you need the time to get away. And if you can't do that on a long vacation someplace, then sit on a park bench for a couple of hours. Meditate. Feed the ducks. Just take some long time for yourself every single day. I tell lots of people to seek out their passions. If you don't think you have a passion, then think about what you wanted to do as a kid and you liked a lot and that had stayed with you over the years. Passions are not that hard to find. Don't try to look so hard for them. When you see something or you see the beauty in something, you would do it no matter what anyone else thinks. That's a passion. If you found something that is worthy of your best efforts and sacrifice and tears, then you found the most important pursuit of your life. Often that pursuit can lead you to something very fulfilling. And another way we find passion is to serve others. Go out and do some community work. Take yourself outside of yourself. See what the world is doing. That sometimes gives you a handle on how you react to things and what you like and what you don't like and is certainly a big way to be on the road of self-discovery. Finding a mentor is another way, a therapist or a coach like the Pushy Broad. Uh, My coaching is available. You can go on the website and use me as a personal coach to help you find yourself through self-awareness and empowerment. Start to be more self-reliant. Start to take responsibility for budgeting and household matters and planning about the future if you don't already do that. Go outside of the box. Baby steps. If you've never dealt with money before and the household bills, then sit down and learn all about it. But no matter what, prepare to begin with a clean slate. Finding yourself is not judging yourself. Do not do that. You would not want to judge others. Do not judge yourself. Give yourself a clean slate. And then, once you find and begin to find who you are, and it's a constant process, but as you find out more, act on it. Use your newly discovered knowledge. Take that painting class or that cooking class or go out there and start a brand new business. Reinventing ourselves is an exhilarating part of life. To say, who am I? You must ask this question regularly because it updates your understanding of who you are and how you change. None of us stays the same way. And anybody that says, I am me and I will not change or I cannot change, I don't buy it. Not at all. Everybody changes. And learning to be open and willing and to have faith that you can change is the first step to discovering who you really are. Discovering yourself is easier than you think. Who are you today? This is Ellen Stewart, the pushy broad from the Bronx, saying thanks for listening, and remember, everybody needs a little push. From the pushy broad from the Bronx, New York. Here is disclaimer information that we are required to produce. Professional coaches provide an ongoing partnership designed to help clients produce fulfilling results in their personal and professional lives. Coaches help people improve their performances and enhance the quality of their lives. Coaching services received from certified life coach Ellen Stewart, the pushy broad from the Bronx, are not offered as a substitute for professional mental health care or medical care and are not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any mental health or medical conditions. The Pushy Broad from the Bronx is not acting as a mental health counselor or a medical professional. All comments and ideas offered by Ellen Stewart, the Pushy Broad from the Bronx, are solely for the purpose of aiding her audience in achieving their goals. 
and hopefully keep you smiling in the process.